So this evening, we will try to understand the book of Hebrews, letter to Hebrews. Hmm? We will try to understand this. In verse 1, Hebrews chapter 1, we read like this, verse 1, God who at sundry times and in diverse manners spake in time past unto the fathers by the prophets, hath in these last days spoken unto us by his Son, whom he hath appointed heir of all things, by whom also he made the worlds. See? In these last days, see, this letter was written, this letter was written, Yes, this letter was uh, written A.D. 68, around A.D. 68. We do not know the exact uh, author, because some say it is Paul, some say it is Apollos, we do not know, maybe Apollos. Uh, but this letter was written to the Hebrew, Hebrew Christians. See, we will try to understand in this way. The, in the book of Hebrews, there are 13 chapters. Yes, there are 13 chapters. In this 13th chapter, the main theme is the latest main theme is salvation. The main theme is salvation. And the focus of our attention is consider Jesus. Consider Jesus. I told you the Bible says all have sinned. There is not even one righteous. None righteous. Not even one. That's what the Bible says. All have sinned and come short of the glory of God. So, uh, it is, uh, we, can, we can say in this book, in 13 chapters, we find the Lord Jesus Christ is, is projected totally. Christ is the complete revelation of God. If you want to see God, if you want to understand God, you need to come to Lord Jesus Christ. He is the complete revelation of God. That's what we read here. That is the main theme. In the book of Hebrews, the Lord Jesus Christ is projected as the complete revelation of God. Hebrews is a unique book. It is the commentary of the Old Testament, especially eh, the first five books. Genesis to Deuteronomy, Pentateuch. It is the, it is the interpretation of the Pentateuch, especially the book of Leviticus. See, the letter to the Hebrews was written to a group of uh, Hebrew Christians, I already told, who faced with increasing opposition, were in danger of abandoning their Christian faith. They were going through the uh, struggles, difficulties, trials, and so on. In doing this, the writer emphasizes four truths. Number one, Jesus is the eternal Son of God who learned true obedience to the Father through the sufferings that he endured. Jesus Christ is God himself. That is, that's what we read. Eh? He is the eternal Son of God who learned true obedience to the Father through the uh, suffering that he endured. That is number one. And number two, 
as the son of God, Jesus is the superior to the prophets of the Old Testament, to the angels and to Moses himself. He is superior than all other people, other great people. And number three, Jesus has been declared by God to be an eternal priest. His priesthood will not go to anyone else because he is superior to the priests of the Old Testament. The Lord Jesus Christ is the, superior, he is the eternal priest superior to the priests of the Old Testament. Number four, through the Lord Jesus, the believer is saved from sin, fear and death as the high priest of God, that is Jesus Christ, provides for eternal salvation. The eternal salvation is given only in the Lord Jesus Christ because he has eh, he has worked for that eternal salvation by offering himself as a, a living sacrifice on the cross of Calvary. And uh, chapter 11 is a great chapter. Hmm. We find the heroes of faith in chapter 11. Hmm. Faith is the instrument or faith is the character to, have, to come to the full, full knowledge of God and to experience His, his uh, uh, blessedness. That is important. Faith is mentioned about 31 times in 13 chapters of the, of the book of Hebrews. Hmm. Ch chapter 11, chapter 11, in chapter 11, the word faith comes 27 times and only four times comes in other chapters. This is so beautiful, so beautiful. And now we will read a place in the Bible. This book the letter to the Hebrews occupies a very important place in the Bible. Mm. Look at that. The first one. It is the commentary of the Holy Spirit of God on the Pentateuch. That is five books, first five books. Genesis to Deuteronomy. Especially on the book of Leviticus. Number two, the writer uses Old Testament scriptures throughout the book, throughout the uh, book of Hebrews, making at least 86 direct references traceable to at least 100 Old Testament passages. In other words, he is explaining the Old Testament sacrifices. In the, in the letter to Hebrews. This is so wonderful. And it explains the meaning and significance of the Jewish ritual. God gave the people of Israel the uh, rituals, the order of worship, So that significance, it explains the meaning or, and significance of Jewish worship or Jewish ritual. And number four, it makes clear, the book of Hebrews makes clear that all ceremonial laws given in the Old Testament point to none other than to the Lord Jesus Christ. The great sacrifice for sin the true priest and the only one mediator between God and man. So that was, that was explained, that was mentioned in the Old Testament, the five books. And uh, 
it is it is fulfilled in the Lord Jesus Christ. And then a believer in the Lord Jesus, a believer in the Lord Jesus Christ, is taught that he has passed from the realm of shadows into that of reality. Let me repeat it once again. A believer in the Lord Jesus Christ, if you are trusted in the Lord Jesus Christ wholeheartedly, that means you are born again. If you are born again, as Jesus said, you have, uh, he is taught. This book teaches us, Hebrews teaches us that he has passed from the realm of shadows into that of reality. Hebrews has been referred Hebrews has been referred to as the fifth gospel because it teaches it teaches us that God has prepared a great mansion for us in heaven for those who believe it is not our work. It is our faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. And He has promised us that He will be He will take us to be with Him. Take His people. Hmm? Not I am not talking about the Christians. Huh? The people who have trusted in the Lord Jesus Christ wholeheartedly and has the experience of being born again. This is very, very important. What is the theme of this book? The so great salvation. Man cannot comprehend in his puny mind the so great salvation God has prepared for his people. That's why Jesus has come. That's why he has come. That's why he sacrificed himself on the cross of Calvary. Hmm? And by his blood, we are saved. We are washed by the precious blood of Jesus Christ when we trust in the Lord Jesus Christ wholeheartedly. This is huh, where we understand from this book. A simple trust. What is the trust? That the Lord Jesus Christ is God Himself. He is my Savior because He offered Himself as a sacrifice, eternal sacrifice for my salvation. And coming to the Lord, if you understand that, you should come to the Lord and say, Lord, have mercy upon me, a sinner. Forgive me and make me as your child. That is the simple prayer you have to make. You should remember when did you make that simple prayer. It happened in my life in 1963. In the month of November, one night. I could not sleep properly. I was totally disturbed. I was just a 16 years old young man. And that night, it disturbed me so much. And I understood that I am a sinner. Man is a sinner by birth. That's what the Bible say, says. Man is a sinner by birth and sinner by his deeds. Because he is a sinner, uh, he, his deeds are also sinful. Look at that. Hmm. So this fact came to my mind and uh, I was terrified at that night. And I, may, I did not know what to do. In the middle of the night, I uh, could not sleep when in the middle of the night I cried unto the Lord, Lord have mercy upon me a sinner. That is the only son, one sentence prayer I made. That night God gave me a great joy. I felt that my burden was huh, rolled away. That is a wonderful thing. And all these 57 years, huh, the Lord has been so good to me. There were trouble, of course. 
बिकॉज जीजस सेड इन दिस वर्ल्ड यू हैव ट्रिबुलेशन जीज द लॉर्ड जीज इज नेवर प्रोमिस दैट इन दिस वर्ल्ड यू हैव गुड टाइम्स इन दिस वर्ल्ड यू हैव ट्रिबुलेशन बिकॉज दिस वर्ल्ड हैज है गॉन इन टू द हैंड्स ऑफ द डेविल In this world you have tribulation, but be of good courage. I have overcome the world. He said, "I have overcome the world." The one who has overcome the world is with, eh, with, with his people. He is with his people. What a wonderful thing it is! Because the Lord Jesus Christ, who has overcome the world, is with us. nobody can touch us devil has no right to touch us if he comes near devil comes near he sees the lord jesus christ on the throne of my life and he runs away so our very life if you live by the standards of god if you live according to the word of god it is a great threat to the devil this is absolutely wonderful see we will make this this book is very very important the letter to the hebrews is very important there are in the new testament there are two two great books or letters one is romans that was written by paul the great a uh, great letter great book and the second one is hebrews we can compare like this in two two books one is hebrews and the second one is romans um, in hebrews we read about the person of salvation the lord jesus christ In Romans, we read about the way of salvation. In Hebrews, it is the ceremonial laws of Old Testament, and in Romans, it is the moral law of all time. In uh, Hebrews, we read about from shadow to the substance. Okay, from the shadow to the substance, because I told you that the book of Hebrews, it uh, it. reveals it reveals the old testament the uh, especially the first five books pentateuch and that too especially the book of leviticus okay so uh, and the third thing the book letter to the hebrews shows from shadow to the substance okay reality from shadow to the reality substance okay and romans tells us from law to grace i told you already the main word in this letter to the hebrews it is faith faith in the living god faith in the lord jesus christ faith means eh huh, you completely depend on the lord jesus you put your uh, whole weight on the lord jesus christ depending on him that's why david said in psalms 23 you know it very well the lord is my shepherd i shall not want look at that he is my shepherd he is my uh, he is my shepherd who is looking after me he is my shepherd who is looking after my welfare looking after my provision looking after my sustenance so looking after my protection the lord is my shepherd that is what uh, david says okay so faith i told you faith comes 31 times in this letter 13 chapters hmm? that too you know 27 times the word faith comes in chapter 11 alone you read chapter 11 of hebrews and only four times in other chapters the key word of this book as you study 
you know, it is better or superior. It is an exhortation concerning God's salvation. This is wonderful. I have divided this book into four sections. Number one, chapter one to chapter four, verse thirteen. Chapter one to chapter four, verse thirteen. We see that the description of God's salvation. What a wonderful salvation. The salvation is described in these four chapters. And number two, chapter four, Hebrews chapter four, verse fourteen to chapter seven. The entire chapter seven. There we see the, the second thing, the priesthood of God's salvation. Who is the priest? The Lord Jesus Christ is the high priest. He offered his blood. Look at that. The priesthood of God's salvation. That's from Hebrews chapter 4 verse 14 to chapter 7. And then the third section, chapter 8 verse 1 to chapter 10 verse 18. Chapter 8, Hebrews chapter 8 verse 1 to chapter uh, 10 verse 18. There we see the system of God's salvation. God's salvation is so wonderful. The description of God's salvation, chapter 1 to chapter 4, verse 13. The priesthood of God's salvation, chapter 4, verse 14 to chapter 7. And uh, the system of God's salvation, chapter 8 to chapter 10, verse 18. Look at that. This is wonderful. And the fourth one, chapter 10, verse 19 to chapter 13. The life of God's salvation. Jesus said, I have come to give life and life abundantly. Look at that. Eh? Jesus said, I have come to give you life and life abundantly. The Christian life is a life, huh? a bubbling life, a joyful life. That is an abundant life. What is the meaning of abundant life? You cannot measure that life at all. This is abundant. Hmm? I have come to give you life and life abundantly. The richness of life we can experience in the fellowship of the Lord Jesus Christ. That's what we read in the fourth uh, section, that is chapter 19, chapter 10, verse 19 to chapter 13. This is the four divisions of uh, the letter to the Hebrews. Okay. Now we will try to understand a few things. Description of God's salvation, that is number one. What is salvation? Salvation is a great, big, wonderful salvation. The abundant salvation. What is the meaning of abundant? In a bubbly, the richness of your life. Hmm? Provision of God's salvation, God's Son Himself. That's what we read in chapter 1, verse 1 onwards, chapter 3. Look at that. Hmm? God Himself is the man of salvations. Look at that. God himself is the source of salvation. God himself is the provision of salvation. Who is this son? The Lord Jesus Christ. Hmm? And the writer here, he explains the superiority of the son, the man of salvation, the Lord Jesus Christ. Hmm? He is superior to the angels. God created angels. That's what we read. Yeah. In Psalm 148, verses 2 and 5, we see they are angels of the created beings. Who is the Son? A comparison given. Son is the Creator Himself. 
the Lord Jesus Christ is the creator himself. Angels, in verse 7, we read that angels are servants. Hmm? Hired servants. Look at that. That's what we read in verse 7. Angels are hired servants. Hmm? The son is the begotten one. The King of kings and the Lord of lords. The very almighty God himself. Look at that. The Lord Jesus Christ is supreme. Hmm. <laughs> angels, what, are the, what is the duty of the angels? They are servants. Hmm. They are servants. Verse 7, we read that. They are servants. Okay. Psalm 148, verse 7. There we read like that. Who are these servants? So, look at that. Verse 2. Psalm 148, verse 2. Praise ye him, all his angels. Praise ye him, all his hosts. They are servants. They are worshippers. Look at that. See? They are worshippers. Angels are worshippers. But who is the Son? The Lord Jesus Christ. He is the worshipped one. He is God Himself. Look at that. Hmm? Angels are hired servants. <laughs> They are hired servants. What do we read here? Uh, in <clears throat> we read here verse 14 Are they not all ministering spirits? Look at that. Hebrews chapter 1 verse 8. 14. Are they not all ministering spirits sent forth to minister for them? Who shall be heirs of salvation? The heirs of salvation are the children of God. And the angels are ministers, servants to the uh, children of God. Look at that. Hired servants. I told you, uh, son is the monarch. He is the king of kings and the lord of lords. Mm -hmm. And then we read in ch uh, chapter 2, Hebrews chapter 2, verses 1 to eight, 18. I just give the reference, Hebrews chapter 2, verses 1 to 18. You can note doubt it. Eh? We see the reason for his humanity. What, is, what was the reason for his humanity? Why he became man? The very God himself. He became man. Look at that. Because he loved me, you and me. He loved you and me. That's why he became man. To offer himself as eternal, eternal sacrifice. For the forgiveness of sins. There is no other way. The reason for his humanity. And chapter 3, verses 1 to 6, we read, you know. <clears throat> See, look at that. I, I'll i read verse 1. Chapter 3, verse 1. Hebrews chapter 3, verse 1. Wherefore, holy brethren, partakers of the heavenly calling, consider apostle and high priest of our profession, Christ Jesus. See, this is the beauty of this th verse 3, verse 1, chapter 3, verse 1. What is this? Listen to me very carefully. Wherefore, holy brethren, eh? brethren means brothers and sisters. Okay, that's the meaning. Holy brethren, our sanctified uh, brothers and sisters. When you come to the Lord Jesus Christ, you are sanctified. What is the meaning of sanctification? Setting apart. 
You are sanctified for the Lord Jesus Christ. You are set apart from this world to serve the Lord Jesus Christ himself. Sanctified, set apart. Okay? Consider the apostle and high priest of our profession. Consider who? The apostle and high priest. The Lord Jesus Christ is the apostle and high priest. Hmm? Oh. He mentioned that Christ Jesus. Who is the Lord Jesus Christ? He is the apostle. Eh? When he became man, he is the apostle and the high priest. What a wonderful thing it is. Hmm? How much we should love him. How much we should worship him. This is so beautiful. The Lord Jesus Christ is God himself. He is superior to all the angels. Look at that. Chapter 3, verse 7 onwards. What do we read there? Wherefore, chapter 3, verse 7, I am reading. Wherefore, as the Holy Ghost said, Today, if you will hear his voice, harden not your hearts. As in the provocation in the day, day of temptation in the wilderness, when your uh, elders did that, when your fathers tempted me, proved me, and saw my works, forty years they, hey, they proved me, they tempted me, they saw my works. Wherefore I was grieved with that generation, look at that, and said they do always err in their heart. You know, they are erring in their heart. Heart is desperately wicked. Who knows this? That's what the Bible says, speaks about that. Our heart is desperately wicked. Who knows it? God knows it. And you, should, you also know it. So, uh, therefore we should be careful, okay? And then, uh, uh, wherefore I was grieved with that generation and said, they do always err in their heart and they have not known my ways. They have not known my ways. Our immediate, uh, immediate necessity is to know the way of God. God's way eh, is the way of salvation. God's way is the way of blessing. God the, God's way eh, is the way of prosperity. God's way is the way of heavenly glory. Look at that. That is the way of God. Hmm? So God has given us the end of God's salvation is a eh, God's provision, God's way of prosperity, God's way of protection, God's way of salvation, God's way of, uh, of uh, provision and the abundance of God's provision. That is the God's way. Hmm? God wants that you should have, you, you are a child of God, should have everything. I have come to give you life and life abundantly, Jesus said. So, uh, God, the, uh, law, uh, the uh, purpose of the Lord Jesus Christ, He is the end of our salvation, I told you. See, purpose of the Lord Jesus Christ is to make you joyful, number one. He is make you to prosper, prosper in your Christian life. The purpose of God in choosing you and giving you the salvation is to make you the conqueror. You should succeed in your life. You should conquer all the forces of darkness. Jesus said to his disciples, I have given you power over snakes, scorpions and all the powers of the devil. I have give you, given you power over snakes, scorpions and all the powers of the devil. Demonic forces will run away when they see the children of God washed by the precious blood of Jesus Christ. See, this is the, the, this is the thing. 
एंड वेन वी कम टू चैप्टर फोर वर्स थर्टीन neither is there any creature that is not manifest in his sight but all things are naked and opened unto the eyes of him with whom we have to do god sees everything god knows the intents of your heart what is going in in the in your heart secretly god knows it what is happening in your heart in the middle of the night god knows it you cannot hide from the living god his eyes go through all over the world and sees everything so we should be very careful hmm? seeing then that we have a great high priest he is a great high priest to get that the end of salvation that is he is he is a great high priest that is passed into the heavens he is a great high priest look at that verse 14 seeing then that we have a great high priest that is passed into the heavens jesus the son of god let us hold our faith fast hold fast our profession what is our profession clinging on to the lord jesus christ trusting the lord jesus christ in all circumstances that is our duty because the lord will never ever leave you that's why that's what he has promised i will never ever leave you father and mother forsake me forsake you father and mother your own father and mother may forsake you your husband may forsake you but i will never ever forsake you god says whatever the circumstances may be god will never forsake his children that is absolutely more than 100% sure so take comfort we it's a great comfort to my heart many times people may forsake friends may forsake father and mother may forsake children may for, for, uh, forsake but my lord god the lord jesus christ he will never ever forsake me there is a uh, there is one hymn like canada hymn which says like that hmm. क्षण होतु निन्क्य नं तपि हे प्राण किल निज सौख्य दुखाक्रांतन इफ ऐ मिस युवर फेलोशिप ईवन फॉर ए फ्रैक्शन ऑफ ए सैकंड ऐ विल हव नो पीस ऑफ मैंड वॉट ए वंडरफुल थिंग इट इज दैट्स वै जीज से नो ऐ विद यू आलवेज ईवन टू द एंड ऑफ द सीज that is his promise that he will do it absolutely sure hmm? and when we come to chapter 5 he explains the priesthood of god's salvation what is the priesthood of god's salvation and uh, look at that we will read a few verses one and two verses chapter 5 verses 1 and 2 we have read in verse 14 of chapter 4 that he is the high priest look at that the lord jesus christ is the high priest of our salvation hmm? and here he says chapter 5 for every high priest taken from among men is ordained for men in things pertaining to god look at that for every high priest taken from among men look at that we were we in the bible we see many high priests appointed by god taken from men okay is all, they are ordained for that uh, for that uh, service that he may offer both gifts and sacrifices for sins hmm? 
gifts and sacrifices for sins. Who can have compassion on the ignorant and on them that are out of the way? For that he himself also is compassed with infirmity. Hmm. Look at that. And by reason hereof he ought as for the people, so also for himself to offer for sins. Look at that. He as a high priest, eh, he will offer sacrifice for himself and for others. Look at that. So he, is, he becomes a mediator between God and man as a high priest. Look at that. That is the, um, that is the uh, meaning of that. And uh, verse 4 And no man taketh this honor unto himself, but he that is called of God, as was Aaron. So also Christ glorified not himself to be made a high priest, but he that said unto him, Thou art my son, today have I begotten thee. Who said this? The Father God. What a wonderful thing it is. What a wonderful thing. See, there, and as he saith also in another place, verse 6, chapter 5, verse 6, Thou art a priest forever. Look at that. You are a priest forever. Hmm? After the order of Melchizedek. Hmm. We see that in the Old Testament. The priesthood of Melchizedek. He has no beginning, no end. That's what the Bible says. He is compared to the Son of God. None other than the Lord Jesus Christ. He has no beginning, no end. Look at that. He is the high priest. The Lord Jesus Christ is the great, big, wonderful high priest. And he represents his people in the presence of his father. Look at that. What a wonderful thing it is. Jesus also said, I and the father are one. That is so beautiful. That is beautiful. Okay. It's the, in the order of Melchizedek. That Melchizedek had no father, no mother. He has no genealogy. He is compared to uh, uh, like the son of God. That's what we read in the Bible. See, and then, verse 7, this is very beautiful. Who in the days of his flesh, the Lord Jesus Christ, in the days of his flesh, when he had offered up prayers and supplications with strong crying and tears unto him that was able to save him from death. What was his ministry when he was on the face of this earth? When Jesus was on the face of this earth, he offered himself with strong, offered up prayers and supplications with strong crying and tears. How was his prayer? His prayer with strong crying and tears. He shed tears for you and me. Because he interceded for you and me. What a wonderful thing it is. Eh? Strong uh, crying and tears unto him that was able to save him from death. And was heard in that he feared. Look at that. He was heard by the father. Though he were a son, yet he learned obedience by the things which he suffered. See, look at that. Though he was a son. So, the Lord Jesus Christ is the living God himself. Though he was a son, he learned obedience. Huh? He learned obedience. By the things which he suffered. Look at that. Was it necessary for the Lord Jesus Christ to learn obedience? Yes. He learned obedience. It was not necessary for him. 
But he was obedient to the father. He learned obedience by the things he suffered. How much he suffered? Words cannot explain that. Look at the cross of Calvary. How much he suffered? Words cannot explain that. He suffered the agony of his soul hanging on the cross of Calvary. He suffered the uh, forsaking of his father. That's why he cried out, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? That was terrible to him. He suffered the pain, agony, bloodshed, everything, the cruelty of man. But it was very difficult for him to be separated from God for that time. And he felt that God left him. It was that experience. He said, I and fa Father and I are one, the Lord Jesus said. When he felt the separation on the cross of Calvary, eh, he suffered the greatest agony of being forsaken by his own father. What a terrible thing. He suffered all these things, my dear friends, for you and me. How much he suffered? Words cannot explain. Throughout eternity, we will not be able to understand fully the separation he suffered on the cross of Calvary. And that's why the Bible, the writer to the Hebrew says in verse 8, Though he were a son, yet learned he obedience by, by the things which he suffered. He learned obedience. What, what does it mean? We human beings, we do not learn obedience. But the God of heaven, the Lord Jesus Christ, he learned obedience by the things which he suffered. No words can explain that suffering. What a terrible suffering he underwent. And being made perfect, he became the author of eternal salvation. By suffering, he learned obedience. Obedience is better than sacrifice. That's what we read in the Bible. So, uh, he learned obedience by the things he suffered. And being made perfect, he became the author of eternal salvation unto all them that obey him. He became the author of salvation for all those who, who trust him. My dear friends, I want to tell you, see, what we can do to inherit the kingdom of God. Do we have to pay heavy price? No. Why, you know? My Lord Jesus Christ has paid that heavy, heavy price on your behalf and my behalf on the cross of Calvary. So that eternal salvation is free. It is a free gift to man. Freely he has given. We should make use of that free gift and enjoy in that eternal salvation. That is so wonderful, I'll tell you. Hmm? Called of God a high priest, after the order of Melchizedek. Look at that. See, one thing we understand uh, in this letter to the Hebrews, that who is Jesus Christ? See, we will understand him hmm? after the order of Melchizedek. Of whom we have many things to say. 
and hard to be uttered, seeing ye are of dull hearing. Huh. See, some people cannot understand at all. How much we explain, they will not understand. Because the spiritual things, worldly things, they will understand first. But the spiritual things, they don't understand. They hear in one ear and leave it in another ear. For when for the for when for the time ye ought to be teachers, you have need that one teach you again, which be the first principles of the oracles of God. <laughs> if that if we see the time, you should be a, a teacher of the law. But we now what happens? It becomes uh, uh, the, to such an extent that we need to. Say the uh, basic things. That means you are not ready to uh, ready to digest hard food. Hmm? You are still like waves looking for milk. We should grow in our spiritual life. This is absolutely necessary, so that we can digest the uh, 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 digest meat from the Bible. We should go from strength to strength. We should go from knowledge to knowledge. And make this, unless you make it as a habit of spending time with you, with the word of God, you will not achieve this purpose. This is absolutely necessary. And I tell you that the time you spend with this heavenly word, with this eternal word, will never be a waste. With my own experience, I am telling you. This is, of course, this word is huh, tough. This is heavenly word. That's why Jesus said, heaven and earth shall pass away, but my word shall not pass away. Look at that. So this is heavenly word. Very difficult. Yes, I understand. But spend time. And the Holy Spirit of God is the interpreter of the word. Where is he? Where is the Holy Spirit of God? If you are trusted, really if you are trusted in the Lord Jesus Christ and born again, the Holy Spirit dwells in your heart. That's what the Bible teaches. And the Holy Spirit will teach you. He will give you understanding to see the light of the word. That is absolutely wonderful, wonderful. Hmm? That's why he writes to the uh, Hebrew uh, believers, for when for the time ye ought to be teachers, ye have need that one teach you again, which be the first principles of the oracles of God, hmm? and are become such as have need only milk, not of strong meat. Look at that. We need to teach the elementary things of the Bible. If, the, if we see the time, hmm, you need to be a strong uh, person and be able to teach others. What is, the, what is the problem here? That shows we do not spend time with the Word of God. Who is Word of God, you know? In the beginning was the Word, the Bible says in John's Gospel, chapter 1, verse 1. And the Word was with God. And the Word is God. That is the Lord Jesus Christ. He is with us. If He is, He has taken up the main place in your heart and in your life. If he is the president or he is the controller of your life, he will guide you properly. What a wonderful thing it is. And then, 
The next thing we read in the book of Hebrews, letter to the Hebrews is chapter 8. The system of God's salvation. What is the system of God's salvation? We have seen the provision of God's salvation, the description of the uh, description of God's salvation, the provision of God's salvation, and the end of God's salvation, God's rest. That is. And now the system of God's salvation. What is the system of God's salvation? A new and better covenant. Look at that. Chapter 8. What do we read here? Verse 1 onwards. Now the things which we have spoken, this is the sum. We have such a high priest. Listen to me very carefully. We have such a high priest who is set on the right hand of the throne of the majesty in heavens. That is the Lord Jesus Christ. A minister of the sanctuary and of the true tabernacle which the Lord pitched and not man, which is the heavenly tabernacle, not the earthly tabernacle. For every high priest is ordained to offer gifts and sacrifices, wherefore it is necessary that this man has somewhat also to offer. See, look at that. So the Lord Jesus Christ, he is, he is the high priest between God and man. He represents man to God. He takes people to God. He is the high priest. Look at that. Eh? No, we will read few, uh, few, th few verses. Verse 5 onwards. Who serve unto the example and shadow of heavenly things. That was uh, Moses. As Moses was admonished of God when he was about to make the tabernacle. For see, saith he, that thou make all things according to the pattern shown to thee in the mount. See, when Moses was ordered to make a build a, build a tabernacle, he ha God has taken him to the uh, Mount Sinai. And God showed him the heavenly tabernacle, the pattern. See, God wants the pattern should be like this. There is no other pattern. It should be God's pattern. God showed him, showed Moses, the pattern of the tabernacle. Or we can say the temple. Hmm? He showed the tabernacle. Hmm? And Moses saw the tabernacle. Why he showed the tabernacle? And see, saith he, that thou make all things according to the pattern shown to thee in the mount. You cannot change the pattern. The worship of God can be accepted when it was done in the pattern given by God. Okay, now turn to me. Acts chapter 2 verse 42. I have been repeating these verse. See, God has given us the pattern of the New Testament church. The biblical pattern of the New Testament church. Acts chapter 2 verse 42. Look at that. This is the pattern. See, in the book of uh, uh, Hebrews, we have now seen that God uh, showed him the pattern of tabernacle in heaven. And God said, do uh, build a, a tabernacle according to this pattern. No other pattern, no human mind. Not according to you, Moses or not according to your brother Aaron, but according to the pattern which I showed it to, uh, showed it to you. God wants that our church should be in the pattern which God has established. He has already given the pattern. Look at that. Chapter 2, Acts chapter 2, verse 42. There we read the four pillar pattern that we see here. Number one, the Bible says, and they continued. Who continued? The apostles and the believers. The Pentecostal believers. Pentecostal means not denomination. <laughs> the Holy Spirit came down. That is the day of Pentecost. On the day of Pentecost. That is the thing. Okay. 
See, on that day, Peter was preaching and many people gathered there, even outside uh, countries, outsiders, uh, they uh, are talking different languages, they were uh, assembled. Peter was speaking in Hebrew and Greek. That's the language he knew, that's all. And those who came from other provinces, other language groups, they were heard it in their own language. That is the interpretation of the message eh, by the Holy Spirit of God. Now people call it tongues. That is not tongues. Tongues is none other than the la language. See, they heard it. It was interpreted by the Holy Spirit of God to the people's needs. People of all different languages. They understood the message. And they came, about more than 3,000 people came to the Lord on that day. And for the first time the church began. How? See, look at that. This is the pattern. Chapter 2, Acts chapter 2, verse 42. And they continued steadfastly, look at, listen to me very carefully, steadfastly, without wavering. In the apostle doctrine, that is number one, that is the word of God. They continued the first pillar of the biblical pattern of the New Testament church is the word of God. Not book, not liturgy or any other things. Man made this. God has given us a pattern in the Bible. Yeah? The word of God, number one. And number two, the second pillar was fellowship, sharing each other. You should have fellowship with one another. That is important. Church is not a building. Church is a group of people who surrender their life to the Lord Jesus Christ. This, is, uh, we, this we should understand. And those who are there, they, they were sharing with each other. The first uh, church was uh, on the day of Pentecost. More than 3,000 people. Look at that. They, they were gathering in Jerusalem. Okay. And fellowship, sharing. And number three, look at that. The third pillar. Third pillar is breaking of bread. Why breaking of bread? Jesus said, when he ate the last supper, before he went to the cross. He broke the bread. He was, he, he, he gathered together. His disciples were there, including Judas Iscariot. Huh? On that night, Jesus took the bread and broke it and gave it to the disciples, saying that, take it and eat it. This is my body, he said. Broken for you. And after the, uh, after the bread, he took the cup and he said, take this and drink it. This is my blood shed for you. What is the significance of breaking of bread? See, when Jesus died on the cross of Calvary, hmm, the first thing happened on the earth is, the veil which was covering the most holy place in the Jerusalem temple was torn from top to bottom. Now even common man can see the huh, most holy place. Most holy place, nobody go, uh, could go there. Only the high priest once in a year, he has to purify himself eh, and take the blood and with trembling feet, he should enter into the most holy place. He should be holy. He should prepare himself for that. Otherwise he would die there. And nobody can go inside. They will also die. That's why they used to tie a, a rope to his, uh, to his ankle. And the uh, end of the uh, uh, rope will be in the outer coat. So high priest used to have in his dress the bells. When he worshipped God, the bells should ring. When the bells doesn't ring, when they don't hear the bells ringing for quite some time, what is the meaning of it? 
that high priest died there. Nobody could go, go inside. That's why the rope. They used to drag him with the rope outside. So holy that was. Most holy place. See, two things we will understand from this. Number one, where we should worship God? In the most holy place. In the presence of the holy God. Nowhere else. That's why the God, God gave this pattern, New Testament church pattern. This is the third one. Breaking of bread is third one. And the fourth one is, fourth pillar is prayers. They continued steadfastly in prayers. What is the meaning of prayer? Your dependence on the Lord. Yes, we need to depend on the Lord Jesus Christ. We cannot do by ourselves. We need to depend on Him for each and everything. That is the, uh, the uh, way to depend on Him. The meaning or, or, the, uh, uh, or how to depend on Him shows in our prayers, Lord, I need you always. I depend on you. By myself I cannot do anything. I can do only in you. Help me. See, these four pillars are required. Other than four pillars, anything that is introduced in your church is of the devil. Because God gives everything for our spiritual life. For our spiritual life, we cannot, we cannot reform or modify or adjust or twist the things like this. We, God has already given his pattern for worshipping God. That is in the, uh, that is in the, in his word, eternal word, heaven and earth shall pass away, but my word shall not pass away. All our other books will pass away. Only one book will not pass away. That is the word of God. So we should walk according to the Bible. Our pattern should be according to the Bible. God, huh? I, um, God go, uh, gave a pattern to Moses about the tabernacle on the Mount Sinai. Why he should sh uh, show a uh, pattern? Moses was a, a well-educated man, and and he was uh, he was a, a matured man. He led the people of Israel. God could have told him, hey, make, a, make a tent and gather there. He should have told, no. But he, he did not tell the that. He gave a blueprint pattern one by one. Number one is the word of God. Number two is the fellowship. Number three is the breaking of bread. Number four is prayers. This is the pattern of the church. If this is not your pattern, that is not church at all, I'll tell you. If at all, we can go to God only through the pattern of God, not the pattern of man. Man's pattern will not lead to God. That's what we see in the churches now. Only God's pattern will keep the flock together. Only God's pattern. God wants His pattern. He is a sovereign God. He wants to wants you to follow His pattern, not uh, your own pattern. That is the system of God's salvation. And in that, the next thing is the uh, life of God's salvation. If you go according to the pattern of God, and worship God, you will see your life bubbling with joy. 
your your life will be a life abundant life that is the abundant life that's what god says life of god salvation what is that constant huh? exhortation from the word of god we take we take counsel from the word of god not from man not from pastor we take counsel from the word of god heroes of faith in chapter 11 you read that wonderful chapter our life how is our life our life should be life of faith without faith our life will be waste that's what the bible teaches us one thing we should understand am i honoring god by following his pattern this is the question you should ask if you want to honor your pastor <laughs> god will not accept that god is a autocratic there is no democracy in the sight of god god is autocratic god wants that you should follow him or bad him as it is so that is absolutely necessary and god provides everything it is the only it is only the lord god who provides he sustains people he provides to his, the people he delivers people he gives protection to the people he feeds his people because he he has created and he is the one who takes care no one else and he wants that you should follow in his footsteps whereby you will honor the lord see god's commandments out of 10 commandments the first commandment you should honor god you should love the lord with all your heart with all your mind with all your strength that is that is the commandment the, that is the first commandment we should honor the lord first him that honoreth i will honor that's what god says if you honor me i will honor you so let us honor the lord and you will see the abundant blessings flowing towards you and the favor of god will be on you always may god richly bless you amen